What's going on guys? My name is Mark Wagner and I'm extremely excited to bring you this amazing interview that I was blessed to get to film. So this interview, I sat down with Derek Struggle, who in my opinion is one of the pioneers of the Amazon FBA educational space. Now, just to give you some context on why you should watch this interview, Derek is a multi seven figure entrepreneur who is also one of the smartest people that I have met. In this interview, Derek breaks down a lot of mental things that really I wish I had known a couple of years ago. This interview is absolutely packed with value. Besides like the first two to three minutes where I can't stop talking for some reason, and also at the end where unfortunately the video was cut off. But like nine tenths of the interview is in this video, which I definitely think that you should take the time out of your day to watch. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into the value. <laughs> All right, Derek, I just want to thank you so much for sitting down with me. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm actually in Bali right now with Derek. Um, I've kind of got the chance to live with him for the past like week and a half. And um, just observing him has really impressed me, not only just because um, you know of what he's accomplished, but really just his mindset. And it kind of leads me to believe that he's going to accomplish a lot more so i was just uh very very fortunate enough to get the opportunity to sit down with him kind of talk about the mindset that has brought you to where you are today For sure. and um we'll bring you to where you will go in the future so, yeah cool. thank you again yeah dude for sure well dude for sure like you know mark is a an amazing human being um so dude i'm, I'm glad that we've gotten a chance to talk and sit down you know mark as you guys know he's a really young um ambitious driven individual so i'm glad you guys are following him and watching his content so i'm excited to be able to share with you guys a little bit about my story um and all that good stuff so um you want me to just share a little bit about where i came from awesome yeah sure yeah, so cool. um he's actually an fba that's kind of his main business but um they, they didn't really start out that way uh derek started basically selling t-shirts in high school um, I, I think that's pretty common with successful people. They're, they always have some weird side hustle in high in school. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so eventually that kind of brought him to where he is today. Um, I know that essentially from my gathering, uh, your main business is FBA Heroes. That's correct. And uh, you've also had some um, some other ventures uh, right. in your path. Um, definitely a lot, a lot more to that story, and I wish we could sit down and talk <laughs> about it for a couple hours. Um, but yeah, Derek's story is very, very inspiring. Um, he's someone who doesn't really let um, doesn't really let advisor adversity get him down, um, and that's something that I really, really respect. Um, I'm not exactly sure how personal you want this to be, but um, yeah, Derek definitely. Um, I think he got faced with a binary decision. Yes. Kind of where you just you keep going, mm -hmm. or you just give up. And um, you know, I, I really respect the, yeah, the choices totally, that you made. Yeah, just for I mean, just for context, guys. Like you know, I'm 26 years old now. I uh, started um, a better half of my last 10 years in the e-com industry. You know, uh, in the early stages of my e-com journey, uh, like Mark had uh, said, I was selling T-shirts. Um, at the time, there wasn't really social media there wasn't really shopify as we know it today and facebook ads a lot of it actually the platform we used was called big cartel i'm not even sure if that's still around <laughs> but i used that and i leveraged like tumblr and myspace at the time to sell t-shirts and i was that kid in my high school with two duffel bags coming to school every day slanging shirts in the quad locker rooms and in the cafeteria and you know as the years progressed i dabbled into many different e-com businesses so, such as print on demand drop shipping all the things that you guys know uh, today as like e-commerce and digital marketing uh, but what the one thing that i found the most fascinating um, as mark said was amazon fba and you know through amazon fba and finding out about the the business model of amazon fba managed to find a lot of success there um ended up consulting and helping other people start the amazon fba businesses that you know eventually turned into a digital product as we all know it as like programs courses online education programs um, and i started fba heroes that went on to become very very successful but um, at the end of the day, that's all success and sunshine and rainbows and it looks that way. Uh, but the truth is, is that it took a lot of grit, tenacity, 
um, a lot of overcoming adversity to get to this point. And, and to be honest, I'm not gonna sit here and act like I have everything figured out because I really don't. I'm still trying to figure things out just like you guys. Um, I'm just in the trenches every day willing to you know, step up in the court and make take a shot. Um, and sometimes you don't always hit, um, but you know, you know, nobody ever goes into a baseball game and has a 100% batting average, and nobody goes into a basketball shorts and sh uh, basketball uh, court and shoots 100% of uh, you know of your field goals. Um, but the people that become great are the ones that are willing to continuously take shots. And you know, sometimes you make it to the NBA Finals. Sometimes you make it into the World Series, and and you know, you you take that last shot and you miss and you lose it. But you know, most people that those times they quit, and and maybe that's a that's a maybe analogy for some of you guys in, in the aspect of like you started a drop shipping business and it didn't work out you started running a facebook ad and it doesn't work out you started like trying to sell this product you got hyped up about it and it doesn't work out like every single person who's successful has gone through those trials of starting something and trying to build something being super excited about something being super motivated to only have like that plane kind of crash and burn and that's normal it's it's the getting back up it's the keep going it's the i don't care um if I continue to fail, I have a dream and I want to you know, do everything in my power to, uh, to get through it. And, and to this day, like I've had a lot of failed ventures, I've had a lot of success, um, but that's just the way that it goes. There's no success without failure. It is absolutely impossible. And if you're willing to fail, then your chances of succeeding, like it almost becomes like, yeah. yeah, it's like you're gonna succeed if you are willing to continuously fail. That's just that's just the truth. Because the people that will are willing to keep taking the shots eventually end up getting to a point where they actually win the championship. And um, I believe that to be true. So. Yeah, I hundred percent agree, and I'm so glad that you said that. I feel like a lot of people who watch this are young, and um, you know when you're young, you just maybe when you're old too. But I know, especially when I was young, I was starting. It hurt a lot more because, you know, people judge you so That's much true. when you tell them you're starting. And then when you fail, it just hurts even more because right. you just prove them right, basically. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Yeah, you know, like for a lot of you guys that are listening, you guys have maybe um, started your first venture, maybe made a couple dollars, or maybe some of you guys haven't even, you haven't even started and you're kind of scared to take that leap. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, like, you know, people are going to criticize greatness. You know, the people, when you're not, you know, if you're not doing anything, then no one's gonna talk about you. You know what I mean? And, and that's just the truth. Like when you're criticized, it shows that people are threatened by your ability to go out there and take a leap of faith. And, and, and that should be a sign of not that you're doing something wrong, but a sign that you're doing something right. So a lot of, you know, being an entrepreneur and be achieving success is just about changing your perspective. Like we, we grow up thinking that criticism is bad and that, you know, um, you know, being risky is bad, but in, in the world of entrepreneurship and success, these are all great things and learning to embrace them is what ends up, you know, becoming the catalyst for getting to where you want to get into life, whether it's like having an exotic car, like a Lambo, or, it, or you know, just, just making two, an extra two, five thousand dollars so you, you can work from home and uh, be able to hang out with your family more. I don't know, everybody has their own ambitions. Not everyone needs to be a millionaire, but, or a billionaire, um, but I think everybody should give their, themselves a shot to, to actually go out there and create something awesome for themselves, you know what I mean, so. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I, again, I'm really glad that you shared that. Yeah. Um, I just wanna kind of touch back on uh, what you were talking about previously. Um, and that is like how you kind of landed on FBA. Like obviously you tried a lot of other things beforehand. Yeah. Um, what was so attractive about FBA? Okay, th that's a great question. Like the thing about the online space is that everybody has like skepticism oh, yeah. and, and I think everybody should have the right to, to be so, you know, with a lot of like, you know, like misleading, misguided type of information out there. And, and that's just the industry as, as you know, as we know it, you know, there's a lot of people selling things that, that they've never done and things like that. Um, but for me, I was skeptical about Amazon FBA, even though I saw other people succeeding. I was skeptical about selling t-shirts before, even though, you know, uh, people were succeeding. It's the fact that I was just willing to take that leap. It's more about, I think the biggest thing, like, and I think the same thing is true for you, Mark, is like, it's just being curious. Like, I'm just curious what would happen if I actually tried. And that's what with Amazon FBA, the same way it was with print on demand, drop shipping, and affiliate marketing and all these different ventures. It was more of like, I just want to go find out. Like, I know, I feel like I really, at this, like, as an entrepreneur or growing as an entrepreneur, I really felt like I had nothing to lose. So, 
with Amazon FBA, it was really just the same thing. It was like, let me just try it. I don't know if it's actually gonna succeed, but I'm gonna put my best foot forward and see. And, and you realize, guys, like sometimes you can make, you don't really know. And, and it's Martin Luther King has this really, this quote that I really love. And it's, you don't have to see the whole staircase, but you just need to be willing to take that first step. And every single person that's watching this, including you, Mark, and including me, any every human being has the ability to take the first step. And when I saw Amazon FBA as like a first step, I didn't think like, I'm gonna be making 10,000 a month instantly. For sure not, like, you know what I mean? Like, you don't, you know, go, you're not, you don't start at the bottom of Mount Everest and say, okay, I'm gonna eventually, I'm gonna be at the top, like top. Like, you're just like, let me just take the first step. Maybe I can get close enough. And, you know, and that's what I did. And I tried it and I and I liked, and I loved it. I, I realized that it was a powerful business model because your ability to spend marketing dollars is a lot lower because of Amazon already has an existing marketplace, which is the biggest online marketplace in the world. I believe it's like 400 million active users a month so marketing for it was is really not as difficult as it would be if you were to start a completely independent like online shopify store where you actually have to drive traffic amazon already has traffic um so yeah yeah that's awesome so um i know that we kind of touched on fba heroes previously uh for those of you that don't know fba is amazon essentially it's fulfilled by amazon that's right um so you know this is an education program that that's you correct. launched to um kind of help people starting their own fba stores um so again i'm not really sure how personal that you want to get on this but um it was extremely successful i think he kind of downplayed that a little bit <laughs> but um yeah it's seven figures within two weeks is that correct so, so i from the time i started fba heroes so here's the story because it, it's the it does sound great right like yeah. i started fba heroes and in, in, in its eighth week it had reached seven figures in in profit already uh, considering the fact that digital is a very low overhead low capital intensive type of business model you don't really spend that much money so your margins are always between like 90 to 98 yeah. percent you know to, uh, besides the fact that you have to pay for your like platform and things like that um but it sounds like i just started it and then i made a million mm -hmm. um but there was a lot a lot a lot of work that happened beforehand like yeah. like literal rigorous amount like like months and months and months of talking to people, building relationships, creating content for people, doing free Skype calls, meeting with people at Starbucks, and really creating this, 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 I wanted to put myself in the best position to succeed. Yeah. So if I'm gonna launch a product, I'm not gonna just launch it without actually putting the upfront work um, to like gain like some sort of like, uh, like trust and credibility with the marketplace. So for months and months, I, I built up this huge like, you know, um, at the time it was huge to me. It was like a couple hundreds of people, like email list and, <laughs> and, and and connections with people. So you know, for me it was death over with. And a lot of times people just try to get a massive amounts of people to, to to see what they're doing. But for me it was more of like, how can I create deep, meaningful relationships with each individual person and provide value to each of them, so that when it came time for me to release FBA Heroes, it was like a no-brainer for people to buy it. And you know, the first day. Um, we did 28,000 and then eventually things snowballed. People started talking about it. It was, people were talking about it in Facebook groups. My YouTube channel was growing um, and, and things just kind of like snowballed. And, and, and I kept I kept doing the same thing I did before FB Heroes, which was producing content, helping people, responding back to you know emails all day long. You know, I'd sit down at my computer just drinking coffee, literally, you know, literally 14 hours a day. And I'm not and just answering emails and talking to people yeah. on Facebook Messenger, helping them, doing, you know, FaceTimes with them. Um, and I'm not saying that anybody needs to sit down for 14 hours a day and do something like that. But at the end of the day, if you have an obsession to want to succeed and you're really committed, sometimes those things just happen and you lose track of time. But I mean, the moral of the story is like, it sounds great, but they're at the, the biggest thing is like just the, the working hard yeah. and willing to put yourself out there and look stupid. And, and, and be embarrassed and, and you know kind of that's just a part of it you know what I mean um, one of my favorite quotes and we talked about this mark last week and it was even in my presentation which mark was a part of um, is if you want to improve be content to be thought foolish and stupid you know what I mean and, and I put myself out there a lot of times people um, you know a lot of my family you know coming from an Asian background a lot of my family definitely did you know you know I decided not to go to college right um, and I decided to pursue like my ventures in business um, and my family would always question me, like, hey, Derek, are you still selling those t-shirts? Hey, are you still doing X, Y, and Z? Like, your cousin's gonna graduate from San Francisco University. Um, you know, why don't you go to college and things like that? And, you know, I, for many, 
for a long time, for many years, actually contemplating going back to college because my businesses weren't doing good. Just like I was telling you guys, it doesn't just like happen like that. Um, but I stuck with it and I feel like uh, a lot of you guys that are haven't gotten there just yet or tasted a little bit of success, just stick with it and, and continue to show up every single day. That's all that matters. It's awesome, man. It's definitely like the iceberg analogy that you That's always right. hear. That's true. Yeah, but um, so kind of going back to the launch of your course, um, I obviously don't know how well that you were doing previously, but I think that anyone can say when you make that amount of money yes. at that young of an age, it can probably have some pretty major impacts on you. Correct. So just out of curiosity, would you say that, you know, after you really hit your maybe your first big success, success yeah. um, would you say that that made you happier? That's a great question. Like at the time, like I have to be honest with you, like I didn't even know what happiness actually felt like. I just knew that I was obsessed with like wanting to obtain like certain things like a, like a, like a lifestyle, like the Lambo and having money to help my family and take them on vacation, get them, you know, really like legit seats at like a Warriors game at a 49ers game, you know, cause I've come, I'm, you know, born and raised in San Francisco and those are our sports teams. It's hard to say, like looking back now, I, I guess you can say that I was much more happier on the journey and climb to go towards there than I was when the obtainment of like, you know, obtaining things are great, but there's nothing more exciting than the chase, yeah. right? Like maybe for a lot of you guys that are young, maybe you, there's a girl or a, a guy that you, you know, that you're, you're, you know, you can't stop thinking about it. And once you kind of get them, it's kind, it's great. It's not that it's not great. It's not yeah. like it's just completely depressing, but it's not as it, the feel. It's more of like the emotional like thrill of like the roller coaster. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. Like you enjoy the roller coaster not when you finish it, but when you're actually on it. You know what I mean. And I and I didn't realize that. So when I got the Lambo, when I had a lot of money and I could literally not, I could literally not do anything and I'd be okay, like for a very long time. Um, I realized that. I didn't, I, have, I, I set out to obtain something and I, you know, I set out to get to the top of this mountain, but then I didn't set my sights on like a new mountain to climb. And I think that really had a lot of effect on like my emotions, a lot of, on my drive and my ambition because I quote unquote, I thought I made it. And I think that was the biggest uh, turning point in my life is when I thought I made it and because I had everything that everybody says that you would, it would, of course would be like, you should be happy. You can. You have a Lambo, you have, yeah. a, you know, you have all these things. Um, but you realize that the things that make us happier, the happiest is when we're, tr when we're, when we have a goal and we're trying to get after it, you know what I mean? And when you accomplish your goals, always set out to get a new goal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when I had the Lambo, I should have set out for a new venture, maybe a different car, whatever it is, like always move towards something. Um, because that's what makes you the happiest, you know what I mean? And, and now knowing, looking back now, when I look at that time in my life, I'm like, definitely when, when I was sitting in my my parents' garage, because that's where I worked out of, um, you know, recording YouTube videos and, and you know talking to people, like that was definitely when I was the most happiest, because it was when I was the most alive. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. It really, really yeah. is. So, kind of going back to the topic of money, I'm curious. Yeah. Would you say that money is the root of all evil? No, I think the I think the lack of money is the root of all evil. To be quite honest, because yeah. like. I think we grow up in this in this society in this culture that like basically like dissuades people from thinking that money is a great, like a great thing. Uh, but most of that comes from people that don't even have any money. <laughs> That's the truth. Nobody who has money will ever tell you that money is a bad thing. Money can do an amazing, but money is like is like anything can be used for good because it's very powerful, right? Money can be used for good. It can be used for be used for like evil, right? Kind of like a fork or a knife can be used to cut vegetables or it can be used to, to kill somebody, yeah. right? And that's the same thing with money, right? And I, I've seen, you know, many people do really bad things with money and really a lot of people do good things with money. And if you're watching this video right now, it's it's pretty clear to me that you have good values because you're watching someone like Mark that we obviously get along really well. And you wouldn't be watching this video if you didn't share the same values as Mark and Mark and I share. So it's like a trifecta going on right here, <laughs> right? Um, but if you have good value you know i think money really just exposes who you really are yeah. you know what i mean if you're a good person and, and you have more money you're gonna be providing for your family you're gonna obviously buy stuff that you like whether it's like you know louis vuitton and gucci all the stuff that people like no that's okay you know what i mean just don't overspend like i did <laughs> but anyway um but also if you're like a bad person it really just exposes who you really are you're gonna just do more bad stuff um 
So, yeah. That's awesome. I think he's really, really uh, speaking, especially to the younger people For watching sure. this. Um, if I had known some of these things a couple of years ago, it really, really would have helped me. And especially what he was talking about, about like not setting your happiness, like not making that reliant upon hitting a certain milestone because it just, it never happens. Yeah. Um, so kind of another thing that I think that young people really get caught up on um, in this day and age is mentors. Now you've met some incredible people and yeah. I'm curious, um, what are your opinions on mentors? Yeah, for sure. Okay, that's a great question. So mentors has obviously become like a huge thing. Like it wasn't really a topic like when I first started, I mean, it's become obviously a lot, a lot bigger as a topic in the last like three to five years. But mentors are, I, are incredibly essential to continue, like, to just get to be in a position to continuously level up and get information at faster speeds than most people are. Because you get, you get to ask questions that are very situational that most of the time you're not otherwise you're not able to find online with the right context, right? Um, so yeah, mentors are super important. And I think for a lot of you guys that the, maybe the qu biggest question is like, how can I get a mentor? Personally, the, the biggest way that I feel like you can get a mentor is to first just focus on your own thing yeah. and build like your building and people will notice it. And when you approach somebody you may want to bring on as a mentor or idolize, or I wouldn't say idolize, but just look up to yeah. and that's uh, you admire. Mm. Um, you at least have something to show for. Like it's it's very tr like trust me because the reason why I say this from experience is because there was a time when I first started where I didn't haven't done anything and I wanted to get a mentor because thinking it was a crutch for me as or an excuse for me as to why I couldn't succeed on my own. But success is very interdependent, and if you can't do it for yourself first, which is just like actually just create something like then. You know, if, if you're like, I'm not gonna be able to create a website or run a single Facebook ad until I have a mentor, then the truth is, I'm sorry to say, you don't really have it. You know what I mean? And I know that sounds kind of harsh, but for a lot of people that want to get a mentor, the way that I did it personally and the way that I found that works is just focus on building. You can build something substantial for yourself and then seek out mentors to get to the next level. And that's what I did, you know. Um, I was selling t-shirts you know, and you know, I built something that a lot of people started to notice. And whenever I, you know, sought out a mentor, of course they do a deeper dive. They look at your Instagram profile. They look if you've actually been putting in the work, or you're just at Coachella and Hard Summer <laughs> or EDC every single year. Of course, because you have to understand that when you when you seek out a mentor, you have to respect their time. Yeah. They're very very successful people, and they, you know, if if they if you're asking them, hey, how can I? you know, do this and then they look at your Instagram story and you're out partying at the club, like, is it really worth their time because they're not seeing that you're really committed? And when I would hit up, like, you know, like contact these mentors and sometimes they don't respond, but sometimes they do. And um, it's just like taking like taking that sh the shot, uh, you know, like I told you guys earlier, um, I did that and you know, a lot of them saw like, wow, this, you know, this kid is really putting in work. All right guys, so unfortunately, this is where the video got cut off. However, there were only two questions that I asked, that I asked Derek after this. One of those being, what do you define success as? And in a nutshell, his answer was, I define success as the pursuit of your full potential. That was really, really huge to me. And it was weird to hear someone so successful say that how they view success is essentially not being successful or at least not hitting the full amount of success that you can obtain. So that was huge for me and hopefully it was for you as well. The second question that I asked him was, what is one piece of advice that you would give a young entrepreneur who just really wants to get into this basically? And his advice was just start, like just take that first step. I know we mentioned this earlier in the interview, but Everest wasn't climbed in one day, you know? You just gotta take it step by step by step, but that first step is the most important one. And he also said that you're going to get judged and just understand that and be okay with that because no one is ever going to judge someone who they aren't afraid of, essentially. That's just what happens when you are doing great things and you are doing things that other people are uncomfortable with. 
So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this interview as much as I did. I'm really gonna try to work on my interviewee skills just so I can more effectively pick the brains of the very, very smart and successful people that I've been blessed to spend my time with. If you guys did enjoy this interview, I'm super, super glad. Let me know in the comments and I will actually be dropping another interview this week with another multi, multi seven figure entrepreneur. So. Definitely keep an eye out for that. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.